This video is a collection of narrative essays on the seven wonders of the world, plus a bonus essay on the eighth wonder of the world, Machu Picchu. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. The first wonder of the world is the Colosseum in Rome, narrated by my husband. The Roman Colosseum, also known as the Flavian Amphitheater, is one of the most iconic and recognizable landmarks of the ancient world. Located in the heart of Rome, Italy, the Colosseum is a massive, oval-shaped amphitheater that was built nearly 2,000 years ago. It has become a symbol of the power, grandeur, and brutality of the Roman Empire. Construction of the Colosseum began in AD 72 and took nearly a decade to complete. It was commissioned by Emperor Vespasian, who saw the project as a way to demonstrate his power and win the favor of the Roman people. The Colosseum was designed to be a venue for large-scale public entertainment, including gladiator fights, animal hunts, and mock battles. The site of the Colosseum was originally a large lake, known as the Stagnum Neronis, which had been artificially created by the Emperor Nero for his palace. Vespasian ordered the draining of the lake and the leveling of the ground to make way for the new amphitheater. The Colosseum was built using a combination of concrete, brick, and stone. The outer walls were made of travertine limestone, a type of stone that was readily available in the surrounding hills. The interior was made of brick and concrete, a combination that allowed for greater strength and durability. The Colosseum was designed to be a massive, oval-shaped structure that could seat up to 50,000 spectators. It was divided into four levels, each with a different type of seating arrangement. The lowest level, known as the Hypogeum, was used for staging and storage. It contained a complex system of corridors, tunnels, and elevators that allowed for the movement of animals and scenery. The second level was reserved for the wealthy and the ruling classes. It was decorated with elaborate stucco and marble work and featured a covered colonnade that provided shade and shelter. The third level was reserved for the middle class, while the fourth level was open to the general public. The Colosseum was equipped with a sophisticated system of drainage and ventilation that allowed for the easy flow of water and air. It also had a complex system of retractable awnings that could be used to provide shade and protection from the elements. One of the most impressive features of the Colosseum was its roof, which was made of a series of wooden beams and canvas awnings. The roof could be opened and closed using a system of ropes and pulleys, allowing for the easy control of light and air. The construction of the Colosseum was a massive undertaking that required the labor of thousands of workers. It is estimated that over 100,000 cubic meters of stone and 300 tons of iron were used in the construction of the Colosseum. The workforce was made up of skilled craftsmen, such as stonemasons, carpenters, and metal workers, as well as unskilled laborers, such as slaves and prisoners of war. Many of the workers were housed in nearby barracks and provided with food and clothing. The construction of the Colosseum was not without its challenges. During the construction, there were several major earthquakes that caused damage to the structure. In AD 217, the Colosseum was struck by lightning, which caused a fire that destroyed a significant portion of the wooden roof. The Colosseum is an engineering marvel, standing 48 meters, 157 feet, tall and covering an area of over 6 acres. It is made of travertine limestone and concrete and could seat up to 50,000 spectators. The Colosseum was designed with a complex system of corridors, tunnels, and stairways to allow for easy movement of people and animals. The Colosseum was also equipped with a sophisticated system of elevators and pulleys that could be used to hoist animals and scenery up to the arena floor. This allowed for elaborate and dramatic spectacles, such as recreations of famous battles and mythological scenes. The most famous events held in the Colosseum were the gladiator fights. 
These battles were staged between trained fighters, many of whom were slaves or prisoners of war. They were armed with various weapons, such as swords, shields, and spears, and fought each other to the death in front of a bloodthirsty crowd. The gladiator fights were brutal and often ended in death, but they were also highly popular. They were seen as a symbol of Roman power and the strength of the empire. Gladiators were admired for their bravery and skill, and the most successful fighters could become rich and famous. The gladiator fights at the Roman Colosseum were one of the most popular and enduring forms of entertainment in ancient Rome. For over 400 years, gladiators fought to the death in front of tens of thousands of spectators, many of whom were eager to see blood and violence. The gladiators were typically slaves or prisoners of war who had been trained in combat and armed with a variety of weapons, including swords, shields, and tridents. They were often forced to fight against each other or against wild animals, such as lions, tigers, and bears. The gladiator fights were organized into different types of contests, each with its own set of rules and traditions. Some contests were designed to showcase the skills of the gladiators, while others were intended to be purely violent and bloody. One of the most popular types of contests was the munis, which was a public spectacle that was usually held to commemorate a particular occasion, such as a military victory or the birthday of a prominent citizen. The munis typically featured multiple bouts of gladiatorial combat, as well as other forms of entertainment, such as animal hunts and chariot races. Another popular type of contest was the Venatio, which was a form of animal hunt that involved the release of wild animals, such as lions and elephants, into the arena. The hunters, typically armed with spears and swords, would attempt to kill the animals while avoiding being killed themselves. Perhaps the most infamous type of contest was the Nomachia, which was a mock naval battle that was fought in a flooded arena. The Nomachia was an incredibly expensive and elaborate spectacle that required the construction of large-scale models of warships and the flooding of the arena with water. The gladiatorial contests at the Colosseum were not without controversy, however. Many Romans viewed the spectacle as cruel and barbaric, and there were numerous attempts to ban or limit the fights. Despite these criticisms, the gladiator fights remained a popular form of entertainment in Rome for centuries, and they continue to capture the imaginations of people today. The gladiators themselves have become legendary figures, romanticized in popular culture as symbols of bravery, honor, and courage. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in the historical accuracy of the gladiator fights, as well as the conditions under which the gladiators lived and trained. While much of the history of the gladiatorial contests has been lost to time, historians and archaeologists have been able to piece together a more accurate picture of the lives of the gladiators and the role that they played in the Roman Empire. Animal hunts, also known as venations, were a popular form of entertainment in the Roman Colosseum. These spectacles involved the release of wild animals into the arena, such as lions, tigers, bears, and even crocodiles, for the purpose of hunting and killing them. The hunts were often held in conjunction with gladiatorial games, and were meant to showcase the bravery and skill of the hunters, who were usually prisoners or slaves. The hunters were armed with a variety of weapons, such as spears, swords, and bows, and would attempt to kill the animals while avoiding being killed themselves. The animals used in the hunts were often brought in from all corners of the Roman Empire, and included exotic creatures such as giraffes and elephants. The hunts were seen as a way for the Roman Empire to demonstrate its dominance over the natural world, and were often used as a form of propaganda to impress foreign visitors. The hunts were incredibly popular with the crowds, who were often eager to see the spectacle of humans battling against ferocious beasts. The animals were usually starved before the hunt to make them more aggressive, and the hunters were often at a disadvantage due to the size and strength of their opponents. The hunts were not without controversy, however, and there were many who viewed them as cruel and barbaric. 
Some critics argued that the hunts were a waste of resources and animal life, and that the spectacle was a distraction from more pressing social issues. Despite these criticisms, the animal hunts continued to be held in the Colosseum for centuries, and even became more elaborate and grandiose over time. The hunts were eventually banned by Emperor Honorius in 404 AD, as part of a broader effort to curb the excesses of the Roman Empire. The Colosseum was also used for mock battles, known as Nomachiae. They were one of the most spectacular and elaborate forms of entertainment held in the Roman Colosseum. These mock battles were staged using specially built pools, which were flooded with water and used to recreate naval battles. The word nomachia comes from the Greek word for naval battle, and the first recorded nomachia was held by Julius Caesar in 46 BC. These battles were often staged to commemorate special events or celebrations, and were used to demonstrate the naval power and skill of the Roman Empire. The Nomachiae were typically fought by teams of trained sailors and soldiers, who were tasked with recreating famous naval battles or inventing new scenarios. The battles were incredibly dangerous, and many participants lost their lives in the process. The ships used in the battles were often scaled-down versions of real warships, but were still equipped with weapons such as ballistae and catapults. The Nomachiae were immensely popular with the Roman people, who were often eager to see the spectacle of naval battles fought on dry land. The battles were also used as a way for the Roman Empire to demonstrate its military might and to impress foreign visitors with the scale and grandeur of the event. Despite their popularity, the Nomachiae were not without controversy, and there were many who viewed them as a waste of resources and human life. Some critics argued that the battles were a distraction from more pressing social issues, and that the money and resources used to stage them could have been better spent on improving the lives of the Roman people. The Nomachiae were eventually banned by Emperor Trajan in the 2nd century AD, as part of a broader effort to curb the excesses of the Roman Empire. Today, the mock naval battles in the Roman Colosseum remain a testament to the spectacle and grandeur of the ancient world, and are a vivid reminder of the power and influence of the Roman Empire. Despite its popularity, the Colosseum was also the subject of controversy and criticism. Many people saw the gladiator fights and other violent spectacles as cruel and barbaric. Some writers and philosophers, such as Seneca and Pliny the Elder, spoke out against the practice of using humans and animals for entertainment. Over time, the Colosseum fell into disuse and disrepair. It was used as a quarry for building materials and suffered damage from earthquakes and other natural disasters. Today, only a portion of the original structure remains, but the Colosseum remains a powerful symbol of the grandeur and brutality of ancient Rome. In recent years, there have been concerted efforts to restore and preserve the Colosseum for future generations. These efforts have included a variety of initiatives, from structural repairs to the implementation of new technologies for monitoring and maintaining the site. One of the most significant restoration projects was the cleaning of the Colosseum's exterior in the 1990s, which removed years of grime and pollution that had accumulated on the structure. This project, which was funded by the Italian government and the European Union, involved a team of experts who used a combination of chemical and mechanical cleaning methods to restore the Colosseum's original white color. In addition to the exterior cleaning, there have also been efforts to restore the interior of the Colosseum. This has included the installation of new lighting systems and the restoration of the underground chambers and passages that were used by gladiators and animals during the spectacles. One of the most ambitious restoration projects was the restoration of the Colosseum's fourth and fifth levels, which had been closed to the public for centuries due to safety concerns. This project, which was completed in 2016, involved the installation of new walkways, elevators, and lighting systems, allowing visitors to experience the Colosseum from a new perspective. 
In addition to these physical restoration efforts, there have also been efforts to use technology to monitor and maintain the Colosseum. This has included the use of sensors and other monitoring devices to detect structural weaknesses and other potential hazards, as well as the implementation of a new ticketing system that allows visitors to reserve their tickets online in advance. Despite these efforts, the Colosseum remains a fragile and vulnerable structure, and continued preservation efforts will be necessary to ensure its survival for future generations. This will require a combination of government funding, private investment, and international cooperation, as well as ongoing research and innovation in the fields of restoration and conservation. Today, the Roman Colosseum remains a popular tourist destination, attracting millions of visitors each year. It is a powerful symbol of the ancient world and a testament to the enduring legacy of the Roman Empire. The second wonder of the world is the Great Wall of China, narrated by myself. The Great Wall of China is one of the most iconic structures in the world, stretching over 13,000 miles along the northern borders of China. The wall was built over the course of several centuries, beginning in the 7th century BC and being continuously improved and expanded up until the Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644. It was constructed to protect China from invasions by various nomadic tribes and has served as a symbol of Chinese power and ingenuity for thousands of years. Construction of the Great Wall of China was a massive undertaking that required the labor of millions of people. The wall was built using a variety of materials, including stone, brick, tamped earth, and others, and its design and construction techniques varied depending on the local topography and resources. Despite its massive size and strength, the wall was not always able to prevent invasions, but it did serve as a deterrent and a symbol of Chinese power and ingenuity. Emperor Qin Shi Huang, who ruled from 221 to 210 BC, is credited with the idea of unifying the various walls into one long fortification. He ordered the construction of a wall that would stretch from the east coast to the west coast of China to protect the empire from northern invaders. This wall was later expanded and repaired by subsequent dynasties. The Ming Dynasty, faced with frequent invasions from the Mongols and other nomadic tribes, decided to undertake a massive renovation of the Great Wall. The Ming emperors realized that the old walls were not enough to protect the empire and decided to build a more sophisticated and stronger wall. The Ming emperors also built new fortifications along the northern borders and expanded the wall to its current length of over 13,000 miles. The construction of the Great Wall of China was a massive undertaking that took many years and a significant amount of resources. The Ming emperors conscripted millions of peasants, soldiers, and prisoners to work on the wall. The workers faced harsh conditions and many of them lost their lives during the construction process. Despite these difficulties, the Ming emperors were able to complete the Great Wall and make it one of the most impressive structures in the world. The construction of the Great Wall was a state-run project that was staffed by a large number of conscripted workers, including soldiers, peasants, and prisoners. The conditions for these workers were often harsh, and many of them lost their lives due to the difficult nature of the work and the harsh conditions they faced. One of the biggest challenges faced by the workers was the treacherous terrain along the northern borders of China, where the wall was built. The steep and rugged landscape made it difficult to transport materials and build the wall, and many workers were injured or killed in accidents. In addition, the harsh weather conditions along the northern borders, including harsh winters and scorching summers, made it difficult for the workers to survive. The workers were also subjected to a number of other dangers, including attacks from bandits and wild animals. Some workers were also subjected to harsh treatment from their supervisors, who often punished them harshly for not meeting their quotas or for making mistakes. Despite these difficulties, the workers continued to work on the Great Wall, driven by a sense of duty and a belief in the importance of their work. Many of them lost their lives in the process, and their sacrifices have become an important part of the legacy of the Great Wall of China. 
One of the most notable examples of the sacrifices made by the workers is the story of a man named Meng Jiangnu. According to legend, Meng's husband was conscripted to work on the Great Wall and died from exhaustion and starvation. When Meng learned of her husband's death, she traveled to the wall to retrieve his body, and her tears and lamentations are said to have caused a section of the wall to crumble, revealing the bones of her husband and the many other workers who had died building the wall. This story is just one of many that illustrate the sacrifices made by the workers who built the Great Wall of China. Their dedication and determination in the face of difficult conditions and countless challenges is a testament to the strength and resilience of the human spirit. The wall was not a single continuous structure, but rather a series of fortifications that were connected over time to create a seamless barrier. Some sections of the wall were constructed along natural barriers, such as rivers and mountains, while others were built in areas without such obstacles and required the creation of extensive ramparts and fortifications. The wall was also designed to accommodate military garrisons, watchtowers, and signal fires, allowing for quick communication and response in case of an invasion. Despite its military purpose, the Great Wall of China was not just a simple wall. In many cases, it served as a complex network of fortifications, including barracks, watchtowers, and fortifications that allowed the Chinese army to defend against invaders and maintain control of the territory along the wall. Additionally, the wall was a symbol of Chinese power and ingenuity, showcasing the country's ability to build a massive structure that could withstand the test of time. Over the centuries, the Great Wall of China underwent many changes and renovations, with some sections being lost and others being restored. During the Ming Dynasty, the wall reached its greatest extent, with many sections being rebuilt and improved to make it stronger and more defensible. Despite the wall's size and strength, however, it was not impenetrable, and many invaders were still able to cross it and enter China. Today, the Great Wall of China is a major tourist destination, attracting millions of visitors each year who come to marvel at its size and beauty and to learn about its rich history and cultural significance. The wall is one of the seven wonders of the medieval world and is considered one of the greatest architectural and engineering feats in human history. In recent years, the Great Wall of China has also become a symbol of environmental conservation, as it runs through some of China's most pristine and beautiful landscapes. The Chinese government has taken steps to protect the wall and its surrounding areas, establishing national parks and nature reserves to preserve the area's unique biodiversity and cultural heritage. Despite its age and the many changes it has undergone over the centuries, the Great Wall of China remains one of the most impressive structures in the world. Its size and complexity are a testament to the ingenuity and determination of the Chinese people, and its continued preservation and restoration serve as a reminder of the importance of cultural heritage and environmental conservation. Visiting the Great Wall of China is an unforgettable experience that provides an opportunity to truly appreciate its size, beauty, and cultural significance. Whether you are interested in its history, architecture, engineering, or environmental conservation, the Great Wall of China is a must-see destination that offers something for everyone. The third wonder of the world is the Taj Mahal in India, narrated by Billy Joey. The Taj Mahal is a world-renowned monument located in Agra, India. It is considered one of the greatest architectural masterpieces ever created and is a symbol of love, beauty, and cultural heritage. The Taj Mahal was built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal, who passed away during childbirth. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and attracts millions of visitors from around the world each year. The construction of the Taj Mahal, one of the most iconic monuments in the world, is an incredible feat of architectural and engineering excellence. Commissioned by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in the 17th century, the Taj Mahal was built in memory of his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal, who passed away during childbirth. The construction of this magnificent monument began in 1632 and took 22 years to complete. The design and construction of the Taj Mahal involved the efforts of a large team of skilled artisans and craftsmen. The architect of the Taj Mahal was Ustad Ahmad Lahorai, 
a Persian architect who was also responsible for the design of several other Mughal buildings. Other notable figures involved in the construction of the Taj Mahal included the chief sculptor and the chief calligrapher. The construction of the Taj Mahal began with the excavation of a large area of land, which was then filled with rubble and earth to create a solid foundation. The foundation was then covered with a layer of clay, followed by a layer of burnt brick and a layer of lime. The marble slabs for the construction of the Taj Mahal were brought from Makrana in Rajasthan, which is more than 300 kilometers away from Agra. It is estimated that more than 1,000 elephants were used to transport the marble to the construction site. The construction of the Taj Mahal was carried out in three main phases. The first phase involved the construction of the plinth, which is the base of the building. The plinth was made of red sandstone and was designed to support the weight of the marble building. The second phase involved the construction of the main building, which was made of white marble. The marble slabs were carefully cut and polished to fit together like a puzzle. The third and final phase involved the decoration of the building, which included the intricate carvings, the calligraphy, and the filigree work. The construction of the Taj Mahal involved the use of several advanced techniques and technologies. For example, the main dome of the Taj Mahal was constructed using a technique called Petra Dura, which involves the use of precious and semi-precious stones to create intricate designs. The stones were cut and shaped to fit together perfectly, creating stunning works of art. Another advanced technology used in the construction of the Taj Mahal was the use of water channels to cool the building. The water channels were designed to create a natural cooling effect, which helped to keep the building cool even during the hot summers. The Taj Mahal is not just a building, but a work of art. The intricate carvings, the calligraphy, and the filigree work are all examples of the artistic excellence of the Mughal period. The carvings on the walls of the Taj Mahal depict scenes from the Quran, which is the holy book of Islam. The calligraphy on the walls is written in Persian and is a tribute to Mumtaz Mahal. The filigree work, which is known as Jali, is made of marble and is designed to allow natural light to enter the building. The construction of the Taj Mahal was not without its challenges. For example, the construction of the Taj Mahal was interrupted by a war between Shah Jahan and his son, Aurangzeb. The war lasted for several years, and during this time, the construction of the Taj Mahal was halted. The construction of the Taj Mahal was also affected by a shortage of funds, which led to delays in the construction process. The Taj Mahal is a remarkable example of Mughal architecture, which is a blend of Indian, Persian, and Islamic styles. The central building is adorned with intricate carvings, calligraphy, and delicate filigree work. The carvings on the walls depict scenes from the Quran and are made of precious stones such as agate, jasper, and lapis lazuli. The calligraphy on the walls is written in Persian and is a tribute to Mumtaz Mahal. The intricate filigree work, which is known as Jali, is made of marble and is designed to allow natural light to enter the building. The Taj Mahal is also famous for its four minarets, which stand tall on each corner of the building. These minarets are 40 meters high and are designed to lean slightly away from the central building to prevent any damage in case of an earthquake. The white marble dome, which is the crown of the Taj Mahal, is also a masterpiece of Mughal architecture. It is 73 meters high and is surrounded by smaller domes and chatras, which are small pavilions that are typically used in Indian architecture. The beauty of the Taj Mahal is not limited to the central building alone. The complex also includes several other structures such as a mosque, a guest house, and a garden. The mosque, which is located on the west side of the complex, is made of red sandstone and is a stunning example of Islamic architecture. The guest house, which is located on the east side of the complex, is also made of red sandstone and was used to accommodate visitors to the Taj Mahal. The garden, which is known as the Charba, is a Persian-style garden that is divided into four quadrants by water channels. The garden is designed to symbolize paradise and is a perfect place to relax and enjoy the beauty of the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal has undergone several renovations over the years to maintain its pristine condition which included cleaning the marble, repairing the cracks, and replacing some of the missing pieces. These renovations were necessary to restore the monument to its former glory and to protect it from the ravages of time and weather. The first major renovation of the Taj Mahal took place in the 19th century during the British colonial period. Lord Curzon, the then Viceroy of India, was instrumental in initiating the renovation project. The main objective of this renovation was to restore the marble of the Taj Mahal, which had become discolored due to pollution and the effects of weather. The restoration process involved the use of a paste made of fuller's earth, which was applied to the marble to remove the stains and discolorations. 
This process was repeated several times until the marble was restored to its original color. In the 20th century, further renovations were carried out to address issues of structural integrity and to protect the Taj Mahal from damage caused by environmental factors. One of the major concerns was the sinking of the Taj Mahal's foundation, which was causing the monument to tilt. To address this issue, a team of experts carried out a series of underground excavations and reinforced the foundation using a system of hydraulic jacks. This process helped to stabilize the monument and prevent further sinking. Another major renovation project was carried out in the late 20th century, in response to growing concerns about pollution and environmental damage to the Taj Mahal. The main objective of this project was to reduce pollution levels in the area and to prevent the buildup of harmful chemicals on the Taj Mahal's surface. The project involved the construction of a new sewage treatment plant, the banning of polluting industries in the area, and the introduction of measures to reduce traffic congestion around the monument. In recent years, there have been further concerns about the impact of environmental factors on the Taj Mahal. The monument is particularly vulnerable to damage caused by air pollution, which can cause discoloration of the marble and weaken its structure over time. To address this issue, the Indian government has introduced several measures to reduce pollution levels in the area, including restrictions on the use of diesel vehicles and the introduction of cleaner technologies and industries around the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal is a world-renowned monument in Agra, India. It is not just an architectural masterpiece but also a symbol of love, beauty, and cultural heritage. It represents the rich history and artistic legacy of India and is a source of inspiration for people all around the world. The fourth wonder of the world is the statue of Christ the Redeemer in Brazil, narrated by myself. Despite the challenges, the construction of the statue was completed in 1931, and it was inaugurated on October 12th of that year. Since then, Christ the Redeemer has become one of the most famous landmarks in Brazil and one of the most visited tourist attractions in the world. The statue has also become a symbol of Brazilian culture and a source of national pride. The construction of Christ the Redeemer was a monumental undertaking, involving a large team of engineers, architects, and laborers. The project was first proposed in the late 19th century, but it was not until 1921 that the Archdiocese of Rio de Janeiro launched a fundraising campaign to build the statue. The design of the statue was chosen through a national competition, which was won by the Brazilian engineer Ator de Silva Costa. Silva Costa's design was inspired by the Art Deco style, which was popular at the time. The statue depicts Christ with his arms spread out, as if embracing the city of Rio de Janeiro. The statue is meant to symbolize the message of peace and love that Christ preached during his life on Earth. The construction of the statue began in 1922, and it took nine years to complete. The construction site was located at an altitude of more than 2,300 feet, on the summit of Corcovado Mountain. The workers had to carry all the materials up the mountain on foot, as there was no road or rail access at the time. The construction of the statue was also delayed by several setbacks, including financial difficulties and technical problems. The statue was built in several sections, which were assembled on top of the mountain. The structure of the statue is made of reinforced concrete, and the exterior is covered with soapstone. The soapstone was chosen for its durability and resistance to erosion, as the statue is located in a humid and windy environment. One of the major challenges of the construction was the installation of the statue's arms. The arms of the statue are made of reinforced concrete, and each arm weighs more than 40 metric tons. The workers had to use a complex system of pulleys and ropes to lift the arms into place. Another challenge was the installation of the statue's head and face. The face of the statue is more than 5 feet tall, and it had to be installed in several pieces. The workers used a series of scaffolds and cranes to lift the pieces into place and assemble them. Despite the challenges, 
The construction of the statue was completed in 1931, and it was inaugurated on October 12th of that year. The statue was an instant success, attracting millions of visitors from around the world. It became an important cultural and historical landmark in Brazil, and a symbol of the country's rich cultural heritage. Today, visitors to Christ the Redeemer can reach the summit of Corcovado Mountain by a train or van that runs through the Tijuca Forest National Park. The ride up the mountain is a breathtaking experience, as visitors can enjoy panoramic views of the city of Rio de Janeiro and the surrounding landscape. At the top of the mountain, visitors can climb a series of stairs to reach the base of the statue, where they can admire its majestic beauty up close. Christ the Redeemer is not only a religious symbol but also a cultural and historical landmark. The statue has been featured in numerous films, books, and songs, and it has become a symbol of Brazil's unique cultural identity. The statue also represents an important period in Brazilian history, as it was built during a time of great social and political change in the country. Over the years, Christ the Redeemer has undergone several renovations to preserve its beauty and ensure its safety. The statue is exposed to harsh weather conditions, including strong winds, heavy rainfall, and extreme temperature fluctuations. These conditions can cause erosion and damage to the statue's exterior and structure. In 1980, the first major renovation of the statue was carried out. The renovation was aimed at reinforcing the structure of the statue and repairing the damage caused by years of exposure to the elements. The renovation included the installation of new lighting systems and the replacement of the soapstone exterior. In 2002, another renovation was carried out, this time focused on the statue's access and visitor facilities. The renovation included the construction of a new elevator system, which allows visitors to reach the top of the mountain in just a few minutes. The renovation also included the construction of new observation decks and the installation of new lighting systems. In 2010, another renovation was carried out to celebrate the statue's 80th anniversary. The renovation included the installation of new lighting systems that illuminate the statue at night, creating a stunning visual display that can be seen from miles away. The renovation also included the installation of new visitor facilities, including a new restaurant and souvenir shop. In 2014, a major renovation was carried out to prepare the statue for the World Cup and the Olympic Games, which were held in Brazil. The renovation included the installation of new safety systems, including a lightning rod and a fire suppression system. The renovation also included the installation of new observation decks and the construction of a new access road to the summit of the mountain. In 2021, the most recent renovation of the statue was completed. The renovation was aimed at preserving the statue's cultural heritage and improving its accessibility. The renovation included the installation of new interactive exhibits that tell the story of the statue's construction and history. The renovation also included the construction of new pedestrian paths and the installation of new lighting systems. The statue remains a beloved cultural landmark in Brazil and a symbol of the country's unique cultural identity. It continues to attract millions of visitors from around the world, who come to marvel at its beauty and significance. The renovations ensure that the statue will continue to stand tall for generations to come, inspiring people with its message of peace and love. The fifth wonder of the world is the ruins of Chichen Itza in Mexico, narrated by myself. Chichen Itza is one of the most famous and impressive archaeological sites in Mexico. It is located in the Yucatan Peninsula and is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country. 
The site is particularly known for its well-preserved Mayan ruins, which date back to the pre-Columbian era. In this essay, we will explore the history of Chichen Itza, the significance of the site, and its most iconic structures. Itza Chichen Itza was built by the Mayan civilization between the 7th and 10th centuries. The city played an important role in the region's political, economic, and religious landscape. It was a major hub for trade, with a population estimated to have reached 50,000 at its peak. The site was abandoned by the end of the 10th century, and its ruins remained hidden in the jungle until the 19th century. In 1843, American explorer John Lloyd Stevens and British artist Frederick Catherwood rediscovered the site and brought it to the attention of the world. Chichen Itza is considered one of the most significant archaeological sites in Mexico, and it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988. It is known for its impressive architecture, including its iconic pyramids, temples, and other structures. The site is also significant for its role in the Mayan civilization's development and history. It is believed that Chichen Itza was a center for astronomy, with structures such as the El Caracol Observatory that were used to track the movement of celestial bodies. The Mayans had a deep understanding of astronomy, and their observations were used to inform their agricultural practices and religious ceremonies. Chichen Itza was built by the Mayan civilization between the 7th and 10th centuries. The city was a major hub for trade, with a population estimated to have reached 50,000 at its peak. The site is located in the Yucatan Peninsula, an area characterized by its karst topography, which is marked by underground rivers, sinkholes, and caves. The construction of Chichen Itza was a massive undertaking that required an enormous amount of labor and resources. The Mayans did not have access to modern technology, and the construction was done entirely by hand using stone tools and wooden implements. Despite these limitations, the Mayans were able to build impressive structures that have stood the test of time. The Mayans used a variety of building materials in the construction of Chichen Itza. The main building material was limestone, which was abundant in the region. The limestone was quarried from nearby sources and transported to the building site. Other materials, such as clay and thatch, were used for roofs, floors, and plaster. The construction of Chichen Itza was a collaborative effort that involved the entire community. The city was divided into different neighborhoods, each with its own civic and religious center. These centers were responsible for the construction of public buildings, temples, and other structures. Chichen Itza's most iconic structures One of the most iconic structures at Chichen Itza is the Temple of Kukulkan, also known as El Castillo. This pyramid-like structure has four sides, each with 91 steps, making a total of 364 steps. When you add the top platform, it becomes 365 steps, which is equal to the number of days in a year. The pyramid is also aligned with the equinoxes, and during the spring and fall equinoxes, the light creates a shadow that looks like a snake slithering down the staircase. The construction of the Temple of Kukulkan required an enormous amount of labor and resources. The limestone blocks used in the construction were transported from quarries located several miles away. The blocks were then carved and shaped to fit together tightly, without the use of mortar or cement. The stairways of the pyramid were built at an incline of 45 degrees, which required careful planning and precision to ensure that each step was level and uniform. Another impressive structure at Chichen Itza is the Great Ball Court. This court is the largest ball court in Mesoamerica, 
measuring 554 feet long and 231 feet wide. It was used for the Mesoamerican ballgame, which was played throughout the region and had significant religious and political importance. The court's walls are adorned with intricate carvings and reliefs, depicting scenes from the ballgame and other important events. The construction of the Great Ball Court required an enormous amount of labor and expertise. The walls of the court were constructed using large limestone blocks, some of which weighed several tons. The blocks were transported from quarries located several miles away and were then carved and shaped to fit together tightly. The Cenote Sagrado, or Sacred Cenote, is another important feature of Chichen Itza. This natural sinkhole was considered a sacred site by the Mayans and was used for religious ceremonies and offerings. The cenote was also an important source of water for the city and was used for irrigation and other purposes. Archaeologists have discovered numerous artifacts and human remains in the cenote, indicating that it was also used for human sacrifice. The construction of the Cenote Sagrado required careful planning and excavation. The sinkhole was first cleared of debris and then lined with limestone blocks to prevent erosion. Stairs were carved into the sides of the sinkhole to allow access to the water. The cenote was also decorated with intricate carvings and reliefs, depicting scenes from Mayan mythology and history. The Temple of the Warriors is another iconic structure at Chichen Itza. It is located on the south side of the Great Plaza and is characterized by its large columns and detailed carvings. The temple was used for ceremonial purposes and is believed to have been dedicated to the God of War. Chichen Itza is a remarkable site that offers a glimpse into the fascinating history and culture of the Mayan civilization. Its impressive structures and intricate carvings are a testament to the skill and ingenuity of the people who built them. Today, Chichen Itza is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Mexico, attracting visitors from all over the world who come to marvel at its beauty and learn about its history. The sixth wonder of the world is the ruins of Petret in Jordan, narrated by Jackson. Petra Jordan is an ancient city that has captivated travelers and archaeologists for centuries. It was established over 2,000 years ago by the Nabataean people and served as their capital city for centuries. Petra is famous for its remarkable architecture, featuring intricate carvings and facades hewn into the pink sandstone cliffs that surround the city. The most iconic structure within Petra is the treasury, also known as al khazna in Arabic. This stunning building is 40 meters tall and 25 meters wide, and it was carved out of the rock face in the 1st century AD. The treasury is famous for its intricate details, including columns, statues, and carvings that depict various mythological creatures and figures. While the treasury is the most well-known site within Petra, there are many other fascinating structures and attractions to explore. The monastery, also known as Adder, is located at the top of a steep climb and offers stunning views of Petra and the surrounding landscape. This structure is similar in design to the treasury and is believed to have been used as a temple or religious site. The Roman theater is another notable attraction within Petra. This impressive structure was carved into the rock face and can seat up to 3,000 people. It was likely used for theatrical performances and other public events. One of the most impressive things about Petra is the sheer scale of the city. It covers an area of over 60 square kilometers and is home to hundreds of buildings, tombs, and other structures. Visitors can spend days exploring the city and discovering new and fascinating sites. One of the most unique aspects of Petra is the Sik, a narrow canyon that leads to the treasury. The Sik is approximately 1.2 kilometers long and is flanked by towering cliffs on either side. 
The walls of the Sikh are also adorned with carvings and other decorations, making it an attraction in its own right. Aside from its stunning architecture, Petrin is also known for its desert landscape and opportunities for hiking and exploring. The High Place of Sacrifice is one popular destination for hikers, offering breathtaking views of the surrounding area. This site is located at the top of a steep climb and features a large altar and a number of other structures. Another popular activity for visitors to Petrin is to take a camel or a horseback ride through the city. This is a unique way to experience the city and provides an opportunity to see some of the more remote areas of Petra. Petra has a rich history and has been the site of many important events throughout the centuries. The Nabataeans were a wealthy and influential people who controlled the trade routes that passed through Petra. The city was also an important cultural center, with influences from Greek, Roman, and Egyptian civilizations. Petra was eventually abandoned and forgotten for many years, until it was rediscovered by Swiss explorer Johann Ludwig Burckhardt in 1812. Since then, Petra has been the subject of countless studies and archaeological excavations, shedding new light on the history and culture of the Nabataean people. Petra is also an important cultural center and is home to a number of festivals and events throughout the year. One of the most popular events is the Petra International Marathon, which takes place each year in September. This event attracts runners from around the world and provides a unique opportunity to experience Petra in a new and exciting way. In addition to its cultural significance, Petra also plays an important role in the local economy as a major tourist destination. The city attracts visitors from all over the world who come to explore its ancient architecture and rich history. This has created a significant source of income for the local community, providing jobs and economic opportunities for many people. Tourism has become the largest industry in Jordan, and Petra is one of the most popular destinations within the country. The city is home to a number of hotels, restaurants, and shops that cater to tourists, providing a significant boost to the local economy. Additionally, many locals work as tour guides, providing visitors with insight and knowledge about the city's history and significance. Petra also plays an important role in promoting cultural exchange and understanding. The city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has been recognized for its importance in the history and culture of the region. By attracting visitors from all over the world, Petra helps to promote a greater understanding and appreciation of Jordanian culture and heritage. Overall, Petra is a vital part of the local economy in Jordan and serves as an important cultural and historical landmark for the region. Its popularity as a tourist destination has created jobs and economic opportunities for many people, while also promoting greater understanding and appreciation of the country's rich history and culture. In conclusion, Petra Jordan is a truly remarkable destination that captures the imagination of visitors from around the world. Its ancient architecture, intricate carvings, and stunning desert landscape make it a unique and unforgettable experience. Petra is not only an important historical and cultural site but also plays a vital role in the local economy, providing jobs and economic opportunities for many people in the region. As a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Petra continues to attract visitors and promote greater understanding and appreciation of the history and culture of Jordan. It is a testament to the ingenuity and creativity of the Nabataean people and stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of this remarkable civilization. The seventh wonder of the world is the Great Pyramids of Egypt, narrated by my husband. The Pyramids of Egypt are some of the most iconic structures in human history. These magnificent structures were built during the Old Kingdom period of ancient Egypt, roughly between 2600 BC and 2200 BCE. While there are over 100 pyramids in Egypt, the most famous pyramids are undoubtedly the Giza pyramids. In this essay, we'll explore the history and significance of these incredible structures. The Giza pyramids, located on the west bank of the Nile River near Cairo, are the most famous and recognizable pyramids in the world. 
There are three pyramids in the Giza complex, and they were built during the reigns of Khufu, Khafre, and Menkor, all pharaohs of the 4th dynasty. The Great Pyramid of Khufu is the largest and most famous of the three, and is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Great Pyramid of Khufu, also known as the Pyramid of Cheops, was completed around 2560 BC and stands over 140 meters tall. It is estimated that the pyramid was built using around 2.3 million stone blocks, each weighing an average of 2.5 tons. The pyramid was originally covered in white limestone casing stones, but these were removed over the centuries for use in other building projects. The pyramid complex of Khufu also includes a number of smaller pyramids for members of the royal family, as well as several temples and a causeway. The causeway connected the pyramid complex to a valley temple, where offerings were made to the pharaoh's spirit. The temples were built from massive blocks of granite and are adorned with intricate carvings and inscriptions. The Pyramid of Khafre, the second largest pyramid at Giza, was built by Khafre, the son of Khufu, around 2520 BCE. It stands 136 meters tall and is distinguished by the casing stones at its peak that are still partially intact. The pyramid complex of Khafre includes a mortuary temple and a valley temple, as well as a statue of the pharaoh known as the Great Sphinx. The Great Sphinx is a massive statue of a lion with a human head, which is believed to have been carved during the reign of Khafre. The smallest of the Giza pyramids is the Pyramid of Menkor, which was built by Menkor, the grandson of Khufu, around 2490 BCE. It stands 62 meters tall and is made from limestone blocks. The pyramid complex of Menkor includes a mortuary temple and a valley temple, as well as three smaller pyramids for his queens. The construction of the pyramids in Egypt is one of the most remarkable engineering achievements in human history. These impressive structures were built over 4,500 years ago during the Old Kingdom period, and they continue to inspire awe and admiration today. While the exact methods used to build the pyramids are still a subject of debate among historians and archaeologists, there are several theories about how they were constructed. One of the most popular theories about the construction of the pyramids is that the blocks used in their construction were quarried from nearby sites and transported to the pyramid complex using sledges and rollers. Workers used copper chisels and stone hammers to cut the blocks out of the bedrock and shape them to the desired size and shape. These blocks were then transported along specially constructed ramps that sloped up to the pyramid's construction site. The ramps used to transport the blocks were likely made of mud bricks and were built at a slight incline to make it easier to move the blocks uphill. As the pyramid grew taller, the ramps would have been extended and repositioned to allow for continued access to the construction site. Some historians believe that workers may have used water to lubricate the ramps, which would have made it easier to move the blocks. Another theory about the construction of the pyramids is that workers used a system of pulleys and levers to lift the blocks into place on the upper levels of the pyramid. This theory suggests that workers used long ropes made from papyrus or palm fibers to hoist the blocks up the pyramid's surface. These ropes would have been attached to wooden beams that acted as levers, allowing the workers to lift the blocks into position. The most complex part of pyramid construction was the process of placing the blocks in a precise position to create the pyramid's shape. The blocks had to be cut to fit together tightly, with precise angles and measurements. Workers likely used a system of surveying tools, such as plumb bobs and measuring ropes, to ensure that each block was placed in the correct position. They may have also used simple machines, such as levers and pulleys, to make it easier to position the blocks accurately. The sheer number of blocks used in the construction of the pyramids is staggering. The Great Pyramid of Khufu is estimated to have used over 2.3 million blocks, each weighing an average of 2.5 tons. It is believed that the blocks were cut and shaped on site, using simple tools and manual labor. This process would have been incredibly time-consuming and labor-intensive, requiring the work of thousands of skilled laborers. The construction of the pyramids was a massive undertaking that required the coordination and cooperation of thousands of workers. 
The workforce was likely made up of skilled craftsmen, including stonemasons, carpenters, and metalworkers, as well as a large number of unskilled laborers. These workers would have been housed in nearby villages and provided with food and other necessities by the pharaoh's government. Despite the many challenges and difficulties faced by the workers who built the pyramids, these remarkable structures stand as a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the ancient Egyptians. They continue to inspire awe and admiration today and serve as a reminder of the power and influence of one of the world's oldest civilizations. The significance of the pyramids is also a topic of debate. Some historians believe that the pyramids were built as tombs for the pharaohs, while others believe that they served a more symbolic purpose. The intricate carvings and inscriptions found in the temples suggest that the pyramids may have served as a site for religious and ceremonial activities. These carvings provide valuable insights into the lives and beliefs of the ancient Egyptians and serve as a testament to their remarkable artistic skill and cultural legacy. The carvings in the pyramids are primarily focused on depicting scenes from the pharaoh's life, as well as religious and mythological figures and events. The walls of the burial chamber, in particular, are covered in detailed carvings and inscriptions that tell the story of the pharaoh's journey into the afterlife. One of the most famous examples of pyramid carvings is found in the Pyramid of Unas, located at Saqqara. This pyramid dates back to the 24th century BC and is known for its remarkable pyramid texts, which are carved into the walls of the burial chamber. These texts are some of the earliest known examples of hieroglyphic writing, and they provide valuable insights into the ancient Egyptian religion and beliefs about the afterlife. The Pyramid of Teddy, located at Saqqara, is another notable example of pyramid carvings. This pyramid features a detailed scene depicting the pharaoh being embraced by the god Osiris, who was believed to be the ruler of the afterlife. This scene is one of the most famous and widely recognized examples of ancient Egyptian art, and it has been replicated in countless works of art and media throughout history. The carvings in the pyramids are not only focused on religious and mythological figures, but also on everyday life in ancient Egypt. For example, the Pyramid of Khufu, also known as the Great Pyramid, features carvings depicting scenes of hunting, fishing, and other daily activities. These carvings provide valuable insights into the social and economic structure of ancient Egyptian society, and offer a glimpse into the everyday lives of the people who built these impressive structures. In addition to providing insights into ancient Egyptian culture and society, the carvings in the pyramids are also remarkable for their artistic quality and attention to detail. The carvings were created using simple tools, such as copper chisels and stone hammers, yet they exhibit an impressive level of skill and craftsmanship. The carvings are often incredibly detailed, featuring intricate patterns, textures, and shading that give them a lifelike quality. The process of creating these carvings was incredibly time-consuming and labor-intensive. The walls of the burial chamber were likely smoothed and leveled using plaster, which was then covered in a layer of fine limestone dust. The hieroglyphics and carvings were then traced onto the surface of the limestone using a red pigment, and the workers used their tools to carve away the limestone to create the final design. The carvings in the pyramids were not only created for their aesthetic value, but also for their spiritual significance. The ancient Egyptians believed that these carvings and hieroglyphics held great power and importance, and they were meant to serve as a guide for the pharaoh's journey into the afterlife. The carvings were believed to help the pharaoh navigate the dangers and obstacles of the underworld, and to ensure his safe passage to the afterlife. The Giza pyramids have captured the imaginations of people for centuries, and their mystique continues to fascinate us today. In addition to their historical and cultural significance, the pyramids are also a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the ancient Egyptians. The fact that they were able to construct such massive structures using only simple tools and techniques is truly astounding. There are many other pyramids located throughout Egypt. The Pyramid of Djoser, located at Saqqara, is considered to be the oldest pyramid in Egypt, dating back to around 2670 BCE. 
The Red Pyramid, located at Dasher, is the third largest pyramid in Egypt and is known for its distinctive red limestone casing stones. The pyramids of Egypt have fascinated people for centuries and continue to captivate us today. They are a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the ancient Egyptians and serve as a reminder of the power and influence of one of the world's oldest civilizations. The Bonus Wonder, being the eighth wonder of the world is the ruins of Machu Picchu in Peru, narrated by myself. Machu Picchu is one of the most famous and awe-inspiring archaeological sites in the world. Located in the Andes Mountains of Peru, Machu Picchu was built by the Inca Empire in the 15th century and was later abandoned in the 16th century during the Spanish conquest of Peru. Despite being rediscovered in 1911 by Hiram Bingham, an American explorer, the site remained relatively unknown until the mid-20th century. Today, Machu Picchu attracts over a million visitors every year, making it one of the most popular tourist destinations in South America. The site of Machu Picchu is situated at an altitude of 2,430 meters above sea level, making it one of the highest archaeological sites in the world. The site itself is divided into two main areas, the agricultural sector, which includes terraced fields and irrigation canals, and the urban sector, which includes a series of interconnected buildings and plazas. The urban sector is the most impressive part of the site, featuring a series of intricate stone buildings that are built into the mountainside. One of the most striking features of Machu Picchu is the quality of its stonework. The stonework at Machu Picchu is widely regarded as one of the most impressive examples of Inca architecture. The Incas were masterful stonemasons, and they used their expertise to build intricate and precise stone structures that have withstood the test of time. The stones used in the buildings at Machu Picchu were carefully cut and shaped to fit together without the use of mortar, creating a seamless and beautiful finish. This technique, known as ashlar masonry, is still admired today for its precision and beauty. The ashlar masonry technique used at Machu Picchu involves cutting and shaping each stone to fit perfectly with the others. The stones are carved with great precision, and they are often cut in irregular shapes to fit around corners and other features of the building. The Incas used a variety of tools to shape the stones, including hammers and chisels made of bronze and other hard metals. They also used obsidian, a volcanic glass, to sharpen their tools and achieve a finer cut. The precision of the stonework at Machu Picchu is truly remarkable. The stones fit together so tightly that it is difficult to fit a piece of paper between them. The Incas did not use any kind of mortar to hold the stones in place, instead relying on the weight of the stones and the precise fit to keep them in position. This technique not only creates a beautiful finish, but also makes the buildings more earthquake-resistant. The stones used at Machu Picchu were quarried from nearby sources, and the Incas took great care in selecting the right stones for each building. They chose stones that were the right shape and size for the particular location, and they also selected stones with specific colors and textures to create a desired effect. Some of the stones used at Machu Picchu are so large that it is difficult to imagine how they were moved into place. The Incas are known to have used a variety of techniques to move the stones, including ramps, levers, and ropes made from natural fibers. The stonework at Machu Picchu is not just impressive for its precision and beauty, but also for its durability. The buildings at Machu Picchu have withstood earthquakes and heavy rains for centuries, thanks in part to the quality of the stonework. The Incas also incorporated drainage systems into their buildings to prevent water damage, another example of their functional design. The stonework at Machu Picchu is a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the Inca people. Their use of ashlar masonry and other stonework techniques created structures that are not only beautiful but also functional and durable. The precision of the stonework is truly remarkable, and it is a testament to the Inca's ability to work with the natural environment and make the most of the materials available to them. 
The stonework at Machu Picchu is a source of inspiration for architects and builders today, and it is a reminder of the incredible achievements of ancient civilizations. The buildings at Machu Picchu are not only visually stunning, but also demonstrate the remarkable engineering and architectural expertise of the Inca civilization. The buildings at Machu Picchu are divided into two main areas, the urban sector and the agricultural sector. The urban sector comprises a series of interconnected buildings and plazas, while the agricultural sector includes terraced fields and irrigation canals. The urban sector of Machu Picchu is the most impressive part of the site, featuring a series of intricate stone buildings that are built into the mountainside. The buildings were constructed using the ashlar masonry technique, which involves cutting and shaping stones to fit together perfectly without the use of mortar. This technique allowed the Inca builders to create seamless and beautiful finishes in their stonework. The stones used in the construction of the buildings are of varying sizes and shapes, with some weighing up to 50 tons. Despite their weight, the stones were carefully placed to create sturdy and durable buildings. One of the most striking features of the buildings at Machu Picchu is their functional design. The Incas were skilled engineers, and they designed their buildings to be both aesthetically pleasing and functional. The buildings were constructed with a drainage system to prevent water damage during heavy rains. The architects also incorporated solar alignment into their building design, ensuring that the buildings were oriented towards the sun to maximize the amount of light and warmth they received. The Incas also built their buildings to withstand earthquakes, which were common in the region. The buildings in the urban sector were used for a variety of purposes, including living quarters for the nobility, administrative offices, and religious ceremonies. Some of the most impressive buildings in the urban sector include the Temple of the Sun, the Royal Tomb, and the Intihuatana. The Temple of the Sun is a semicircular building that was used for astronomical observations and ceremonies related to the sun. The Royal Tomb is a building that was likely used as a mausoleum for the Inca rulers, while the Intihuatana is a carved rock structure that was used for astronomical observations. The agricultural sector of Machu Picchu includes terraced fields and irrigation canals that were used to grow crops such as corn, potatoes, and quinoa. The terraced fields were designed to maximize the amount of arable land available in the mountainous region. The irrigation canals, which were constructed using stones, allowed the Incas to channel water from nearby rivers and streams to their crops. The buildings at Machu Picchu are not only visually stunning, but also showcase the engineering and architectural expertise of the Inca civilization. The ashlar masonry technique used in the construction of the buildings allowed the Inca builders to create seamless and beautiful finishes. The functional design of the buildings, which includes a drainage system, solar alignment, and earthquake-resistant structures, demonstrates the Inca's remarkable engineering skills. The buildings were used for a variety of purposes, including living quarters, administrative offices, and religious ceremonies. The agricultural sector of Machu Picchu includes terraced fields and irrigation canals, which were used to grow crops in the mountainous region. Together, the buildings and agricultural sector of Machu Picchu showcase the Inca's ingenuity and skill, making it one of the most impressive archaeological sites in the world. Another fascinating aspect of Machu Picchu is its religious significance. Machu Picchu was not just a city, but a religious sanctuary of great importance to the Inca Empire. Its location on a mountain ridge, surrounded by the imposing Andes Mountains, made it a perfect site for religious ceremonies and spiritual contemplation. The Incas believed that the surrounding mountains were sacred, and that they were home to powerful deities who could bring good fortune or disaster to their people. They also believed that Machu Picchu was a place where the gods could communicate with humanity. One of the most important buildings in Machu Picchu is the Temple of the Sun. This temple was built to worship Inti, the Inca sun god. 
The temple has a unique design that allows sunlight to enter a chamber at the center of the building only during the summer solstice. During this time, the sunlight creates a beam that illuminates an altar in the chamber, which was used for offerings and ceremonies. This alignment was a remarkable feat of engineering and astronomy, and it shows the Inca's deep knowledge of the natural world. Another important building at Machu Picchu is the Intihuatana Stone. This stone was believed to be a sacred anchor point that tied the site to the heavens. It was used for astronomical observations and was believed to have a powerful spiritual energy. The name Intihuatana means hitching post of the sun in the Quechua language, which was the language of the Incas. The stone has four sides, each aligned with a cardinal direction, and its shadow moves along the rock during the day, marking the passing of time. The royal tomb is another significant structure at Machu Picchu. This building was a funerary temple for the Inca royalty and was used for the mummification of their bodies. It is believed that the mummies were placed in the temple and were worshipped as divine ancestors. The temple is adorned with intricate stonework and its interior contains a large stone altar that was used for offerings and ceremonies. The sacred plaza is the heart of Machu Picchu and is believed to have been a central location for religious ceremonies and festivals. The plaza is surrounded by important buildings, including the Temple of the Sun, the Royal Tomb, and the Main Temple. It is also surrounded by several small platforms that were used for offerings and other religious activities. The Inca Empire was deeply spiritual and Machu Picchu was an essential center for their religious practices. The site was believed to be a portal between the physical world and the spiritual realm, and it was used for worship, prayer, and contemplation. The careful alignment of the buildings with the movements of the sun and stars, the precise stonework, and the beautiful architecture all attest to the Inca's deep reverence for their gods and their belief in the power of their sacred site. Today, Machu Picchu remains an awe-inspiring place that continues to inspire wonder and reverence in visitors from all over the world. Despite being one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world, Machu Picchu remains shrouded in mystery, with many unanswered questions about its purpose and history. One of the main mysteries surrounding Machu Picchu is its purpose. While many theories exist, there is still no clear consensus among archaeologists and historians. Some believe that Machu Picchu was a royal retreat for Inca emperors, while others argue that it was a pilgrimage site for spiritual seekers. Others speculate that it was a site for astronomical observations or served as a military outpost to protect the Inca Empire. The reasons for the abandonment of Machu Picchu are also unclear. While it is widely accepted that the site was abandoned during the Spanish conquest of Peru in the 16th century, the reasons for this abandonment are still debated. Some historians speculate that the site was abandoned due to a smallpox epidemic that decimated the Inca population, while others argue that it was abandoned due to environmental factors such as drought or soil erosion. The lack of written records from the Inca Empire also contributes to the mystery surrounding Machu Picchu. Unlike other ancient civilizations such as the Egyptians or Greeks, the Inca Empire did not have a system of writing, meaning that much of what is known about Inca culture comes from oral traditions and archaeological evidence. In addition to these historical mysteries, there are also ongoing debates surrounding the preservation and restoration of Machu Picchu. The site faces many challenges, including overcrowding, erosion, and environmental damage. In recent years, the Peruvian government has taken steps to limit the number of visitors to the site and to improve infrastructure to better protect the fragile ecosystem. However, some argue that these efforts have not gone far enough and that more needs to be done to protect the site for future generations. Despite these mysteries and debates, Machu Picchu remains an iconic symbol of Inca culture 
and a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the Inca people. Its stunning architecture, breathtaking views, and fascinating history continue to draw visitors from around the world. As researchers continue to study and uncover new information about this incredible site, we may one day unravel some of the mysteries that still surround it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest videos. Thank you.